Namaste Saraswati Deve, Bodhavari, Picharine, Nir Vishisha, Sinya Vadi, Pastyatya de Sitaine, Panchakalpa Durubisya, Kriva Sindhu Devacha, Ditanam, Bhavani Bhyo, Vaishnavi Bhyo, Namaho Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhunit Ramana, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasudhi Gaur, Bhakta Vrindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, um, so the devotees who have been coming on regularly, we've been going through the verses of Shikshastika. Uh, it's been a little broken up because of other programs, but we're going to conclude today with the last two verses, verse 7 and 8. Let me preface this particular presentation by saying these last two verses are exclusively Radharani's mood in love for Krishna. Uh, these are very elevated forms of spiritual emotions. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, teaching us one of the higher mellows of devotional service, both by his practice of worshiping the Lord in the mood of Radharani and by his instructions to the world. What is the mood of love in separation? and love in union. So here we have this verse, the seventh verse, which of course comes in the series of verses, making us higher and higher into the moods of loving devotional service. We've all heard, but it's not, it's always nice to uh, re-mention that the whole process of devotional service is to come to ecstatic love for Krishna. Um, that ecstatic love is situated within the heart of all living beings. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Saru Kabunai Sravanadi Siddhi Chitte Kodiye Udoi. In the hearts of all living entities, pure love for Krishna is situated. So this verse, uh, the seventh verse, which we uh, will begin here. Yugaitam nimeshena chakshusha pravishaitam shunyaitam jagat sarvam govinda virahena me. Virahena is a very important word in this whole thing. Virahena mean, means feeling separation from govinda. I'm feeling great separation from govinda. So the translation, my Lord Govinda, because of separation for you, I consider even a moment a great millennium. Tears flow from my eyes like torrents of rain, and I see the entire world as vacant. Um, to consider a moment like a millennium is not a exaggeration. It's simply an expression of a particular consciousness Time is understood in terms of consciousness. Time is not what we know as the clock on the wall or the seconds, the hours. That is a measurement of time. The time itself is Krishna. And time manifests itself within the hearts and minds or in the life of a person according to your consciousness. Uh, example would be, if you are happy and you are engaged in activities that are of the nature of happiness, time flies, goes very fast. If you are unhappy, time 
is very slow. And if you are waiting for something to happen, and the more you wait, or the more impatient you get for the moment to happen, time stops. It practically doesn't even move. So you see that how time affects your consciousness based on the nature of your consciousness. So here we see a moment seems like a millennium because in that separation, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the, in the mood of Radharani is speaking in that separation, it's so painful. And in that pain, you know, I'm experiencing great unhappiness. Tears are flowing like, not like normal, but like torrents, like waterfalls. I look around, I see everything in this world is useless. That's what's also sometimes we see when a person loses a loved one, then life has practically have, has lost its meaning. We look at all the things that we enjoyed doing or the, all the things that we have, and we looked at, at them and we think they have, they just look like nothing. There's no attraction for them. We don't even give any value to them at all. So that's how this mood of separation works upon a devotee's life. But in that separation from Krishna, caused by love for Krishna, uh, everything seems useless, void, without meaning. And time is so slow. And in that, and there's one particular expression of Srimati Radharani she makes. And Krishna what left Vrindavan having been taken away by Akura to go to Mathura to take care of some political business, in other words, to settle the affairs with the devotees there and to kill King Kamsa. Krishna, the gopis tried to stop Akura from, you know, taking Krishna. They even fell in front of the chariot. <laughs> they did everything they could, even Mother Yasoda, Nanda, everyone, the entire Vrindavan entourage of all of Krishna's associates were in overwhelmed by anxiety seeing that Krishna was leaving. But Krishna said something just before he left. He said, I'll be back. I'll be back. So that word, that statement alone kept the lives of the devotees in Vrindavan uh, going. In other words, they didn't see any meaning to life without Krishna. But because Krishna said, I'll be back, you know, they, they kept that statement as their life's breath, hoping that someday that will come. It says that Mother Yasoda, Radharani, and many of the gopis would go to the edge of Vrindavan in the evening just to see if Krishna was coming back every day. They went on with their duties and other things in a very mechanical way. Without any, just like it says here, the entire world seems void without, without Govinda. So this loving and separation caused them great pain and disorientation. They couldn't even function. But that one statement kept them alive. I'll be back. So at one point, after a long time, because Krishna didn't come back for many, many years, Radharani said in her expression, she said, she was expressing herself, and she said, Krishna, you are like a, a man who keeps animals, and you take the animals and you lock them in a dwelling, in a barn, and then you set the barn on fire. 
the animals are crying, but because you lock the door, they can't get out. So I am like those animals. I am crying in the fire of separation from you. I'm burning in that fire of separation for you. And I want to give up my life, but I can't because you lock the door with the statement, I'll be back. So that was Radharani's ecstasy in love for Krishna, waiting for Krishna to return. So this last prayer is really because love and separation is more intense than love and meeting. It has a greater form of emotional expression. The last verse, which we'll also read, is loving love and meeting Krishna. But the intensification of love and separation is the highest. Because in that intensification of love, especially when Krishna appears within the hearts and minds of his devotees, that appearance is called sporti. Sporti means manifestation. And you'll find that word mentioned throughout the Shastras that Krishna was in his sporti manifestation, a more sporti form. He appeared in the hearts and minds of his devotees. And therefore, in that they were loving Krishna in that mood, but still in the mood of wanting Krishna to personally appear. Mm -hmm. So in this particular uh, uh, verse, it talks about there are three aspects. This is called Vipralamba Bhav. Don't, don't move the... Don't move it around. Vipralamba Bhav. One, the separation before meeting by hearing about the lover, that is us. We are in the mood of, that is just called um, Pur, Purna Munku, Purvaras, Purvaras. Purvaras is loving Krishna before meeting Krishna. That's us. Although we already know Krishna, we've been with Krishna, we've come to this material world, because of our coverings of the material energy and the time that we've been here, although we know Krishna, we know him well, we forgot everything because of our coverings of the entire material energy. And so we are trying to re reawaken our love. So that is called Purvaras, loving Krishna before meeting Krishna. That comes by hearing about Krishna. As we hear about Krishna and all his wonderful qualities and activities, we become attracted to Krishna more and more. And in that attraction, we become more enthusiastic to serve Krishna. And that you know, awakens our love for Krishna. The second aspect of Vipralamba Bhav is a kind of anger that comes with that. Although uh, there is love there, it's love and anger. But because of Krishna not being there, Radharani becomes angry at the same time in loving emotion. And that's, that's due to separation. And the last one is called pravasa. Pravasa means physical dif dist distance. That means after meeting Krishna, one feels separ is separated from Krishna. So the physical, uh, what we say, distance between the Lord and his devotee is a kind of a separation that comes after meeting. There is a separation that comes even during meeting and that is expressed by Radharani's love for Krishna. There's a beautiful pastime where Radha and Krishna are together. And uh, one of the names of Krishna is Madhu. Madhu means honey, but Madhu also means bee. Bees are referred to as Madhu. So while they were together, there was a bee that was flying around and it was just buzzing around the heads of Radha and Krishna. So Madhu Mangal, one of Krishna's most entered cowherd boys, he was there and he came and he saw. So he decided to help by 
taking by uh, shooing away the bee. So he did what he could to push away the bee and the bee left. And then Madhu Mangal said, Madhu's gone, Madhu's gone, Madhu's gone, referring to the bee. But Radharani, when she heard Madhu's gone, she was thinking of Krishna. Oh, Krishna's gone, he's gone. Although he was right next to her, in her ecstasy of feeling separation from Krishna, she couldn't recognize the fact that Krishna was next to her. So she was exhibiting a mood of separation, even though while Krishna was personally present. This is an, this is an interesting mood of devotion. Uh, the word nimeshena means, uh, means a moment, but not a moment like we calculate. It means a blink of an eye. As the fast as the eye blinks, that is what is called the nimeshena. So the one moment, one blinking of an eye appears like many, 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 many millions of years. The gopis, we know, they, um, they cursed Lord Brahma. They said, Brahma, you are an imperfect creator. You have created eyes with eyelids and therefore eyelids blink. And because eyelids blink, we can't see Krishna for, for in that period of blinking. Therefore, they said, you don't know your service. You don't know what you're doing. You've created eyelids, that eyes that blink. Well, this is ecstasy and love for Krishna. Mm -hmm. And of course, then we, in this verse, we it's mentioned the, the five types of ways that we can connect with Krishna through neutrality, dasya, sakya, vatsalya, madhurya. And then the secondary rasas, which are seven in number, laughter, wonder, compassion, chivalry, anger, fear, and ghastliness. <laughs> These secondary rasas are either compatible or incompatible in relationship to the primary ones. I'll give you an example. Uh, what's compatible? The second, one of the secondary rasas is humor. So Krishna lays down and he's laying down, he's got his head on the lap of one of his cowherd boys. And then the cowherd boys say, oh, Krishna, 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 we want to give you a nice sweet. So close your eyes and open your mouth. So he does and they drop a flower in his mouth and then they all start laughing, including Krishna. So that is uh, sakuras or friendship with the mood of humor like that. Ghastliness is something that is horrible. So ghastliness doesn't go along with Madhurya Ras. Madhurya Ras is always sweet and doesn't have the element of ghastliness, but it may have the element of anger. It may have the element of wonder. It may also, also have the element of compassion and laughter, but not chivalry or ghastliness. So by reading Nectar of Devotion, you learn these different, these five, primary rasas and seven secondary rasas. Okay, and then of course, um, there's a lot to this particular presentation. And then the things that, that inspire a separation from Krishna, I can give you a material example. I'll give you the spiritual example first, is that if they see Krishna's flute, they feel separation from Krishna. If they see Krishna's peacock feather, the feelings are also the same. In other words, these are these are called sattvika bhavas, bhavas, or those things that remind one of the lover that belong to the lover. An example in the material world is like if you see the shoes of your beautiful child, you have a little child and you see the shoes, it reminds you of the child and you're, because you love the child, simply by seeing the shoes, your feelings of love awaken. So seeing something in relationship to the person you love 
awakens that love. And of course, to use another angle of explanation, when someone who is close to you dies or leaves the world, then when you see something that belongs to them, your, your happiness, your, your unhappiness increases even more. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is a very elevated form of devotion, this mood of separation. Uh, on second thought, I'm not going to do the last verse because this mood of separation is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, designated mood for the, for the devotees in ISKCON. Lord Chaitanya taught separate, the mood of Vipralamba Bhav as the mood of worshiping Krishna in this age. And what is that Vipralamba Bhav? It means that I want to meet Krishna and now I'm feeling separation from Krishna. So how do I express my separation from Krishna in the mood of wanting to meet Krishna? And that is by serving Krishna. So the devotee wants to serve more and more and better as an expression of their desire to meet Krishna. And in that mood of trying to meet Krishna, the anxiety of separation increases. Now this is Lord Chaitanya's teachings. Um, Prabhupada, along with Bhakti Siddhanta and the Acharyas, mentioned one should not think, well, I got Krishna, I know Krishna. Last night Krishna came to me and he told me so many things. And <laughs> this is not our mood. For, the mood is that Krishna is so wonderful, but he sometimes Krishna comes when he sees a devotee. He shows special mercy and he appears in the life of the devotee in the devotee's heart and mind and the devotee feels completely satisfied and happy feeling the presence of Krishna. But Krishna doesn't stay. He just gives that momentary and sometimes a little longer experience of himself to his devotee and then he disappears again. And when he disappears again, it's even worse. <laughs> The example would be given, if you are never rich, if you never had any money, you don't miss it as much as a person who had it and then lost it. So in the same way, when, the, when Krishna comes and then he leaves, the devotees becomes more and more filled with the mood of separ and the anxiety of separation from Krishna. But a materialist who has these feelings of separation from someone in the material world, the time factor destroys the relationship. Just like if you love someone and they go away, after some time, you think, well, I have to go on with my life. Let me find someone else or something to replace that. And then in order to go on, you kind of separate yourself from the, the feelings of the past. But in Krishna consciousness, the more the separation, the stronger the anxiety of that separation continues. And when it becomes impossible to live without Krishna, then Tattva Deham Purna Janma Naiti Mameti Sorjin, then you can go back to Godhead. So what we're talking is very high elevated stages of loving Krishna, but we should hear about these things so we know what is the goal and what is the mood of the, uh, the advanced stages of bhakti. Okay. And then the Acharyas, in describing these last two verses, describe the different types of ecstasies that one experiences in this, these loving relationships. So this mood of separation, although it's not the final verse, is higher and the highest and the most uh, sought after mood for the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself. And that's a whole other category 
how Lord Chaitanya, who was Krishna himself, interacted with his devotees and the mood of separation he created between himself and his devotees are also the, the compilations of many, many scriptures describing the pastimes of the Lord and his devotees. Okay, so I'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for a beautiful explanation of the verse. It's just uh, very sweet to hear that and hope we will have this feeling one day. We will feel the separation from Krishna. Uh, devotees, if you have any questions, um, comments, re reflections, please unmute yourself and you can ask the questions or type in the chat box. Thank you. If you read Jiva Goswami's Preeti Sandarbha, he gives further explanations of this particular mood of devotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot there. You can learn it from also from Bhakti Vinod Thakur's writings, especially Jaiva Dharma. Mm -hmm. In this verse, there's not a trace of selfishness because everything is for Krishna's enjoyment. Although one is feeling unhappy within themselves, it's an expression of their love for Krishna. Therefore, Krishna is finding great enjoyment in that mood. Guru Maharaj, I have a question uh, on this actually, or maybe two questions, if you don't mind me asking. Uh, so one thing is uh, Krishna's quality is a renunciation. And uh, like one of the qualities is that he's, he's, he can renounce. And he exhibited this quality when he left Rindavan. And uh, as you said, that Krishna comes and then he leaves. Uh, so it's a very scary to know that, that Krishna will come. And in our personal lives, we see that so many times we are so static and we feel that he, he's just right there. We can see him when we see the deity's form. We just feel that his presence and then sometimes we just feel that emptiness that he's not there we can't feel him can't see him it just he's just not around so that is one thing guru maharaj how we can have that complete faith that when he will come he will definitely come and he will never leave us well that's not true he'll continue to leave you <laughs> Well, the only time you can be assured of, of uh, complete happiness is when you go back to the spiritual world. It doesn't happen on this, in, in this life or on, in this, uh, on this planet. There will always be the mood of separation. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but some people, they can't handle it, so they, they just die. But you have to die in pure consciousness that way. That way you can go back to Godhead. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. And I asked one more question about this, Guru Maharaj. That when let you said add, that. Well, let, me, let me answer your question also. This emptiness you feel could either be uh, 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 caused by Maya or caused by love. So you have to see. Is it just your Maya that you you just can't relate to anything? Your your spiritual consciousness is down, or it's actually due to separation from Krishna, and you just feel that Krishna is not there. So there's there's two things you have to see. We have to under try to understand what is the cause of this feeling of emptiness. Yeah. That is right. Yeah. That's why there's people who try to imitate these feelings and when they exhibit certain moods that are described. But it's all it's all pretense and show. There's no substance to it. Mm -hmm. When it's real, you know it. When it's, when it's Maya, 
you also know it. <laughs> you can see the distinction between them. Mm. It's like Radharani, she's standing on the altar. So uh, what is she doing? Can you, some, can you somebody describe what is she doing? She's giving a message to all of us when you see Radharani's form. What is that message? And it's it's a twofold message, and each of the each of the angles of the message are complete opposite. So I'm giving you some hint. What is Radharani doing? Her presence is there. That she's uh, she's blessing us all the time. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Continue. How is she blessing you? Uh, with her glance and with her um, hands up, if if she's in that form, yes. Okay, you got it. When her hand is in that form, she's blessing. But when that hand's in that form, there's another message. That means for those who are unqualified, that that hand means stop. Don't go any farther. It's not a blessing. It's a it's a cautionary signal saying, you're not qualified. Stop. So she's giving both. It depends on your consciousness. You can see it as a blessing or you can see it as a cautionary measure not to try to push Krishna in the particular consciousness you're in. If you're in the wrong consciousness, it's a stop. If you're in the right consciousness, it's a blessing. Thank you. That's all you got to say? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I don't have okay. any words. Maybe I do. I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm just lost in your answer. Maybe I think that's why. Uh, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I, I had know. another question, but I will wait. She protects yes. Krishna and she, she brings you to Krishna, but she also protects the, those who are unqualified to approach Krishna. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember that. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I think Raj Prabhu has his hands up. Uh, I had another question, but I'll give her this chance and then I'll ask at the end, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Raj Prabhu, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I sometimes hear, I sometimes hear that uh, Krishna is never separated from Radharani. So I know how to understand this. Uh, your 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 words are breaking up. <laughs> oh, sorry. I sometimes hear that Krishna is never separated from Radharani. So I'm not sure how to understand this. Yeah, it's true. Because the loving relationship is never broken, the separate the meet they're always they're always together. But that love takes two forms in meeting and separation. So in meeting they're together in separation. Krishna appears within her heart and mind constantly. So in either case, they're never separated. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Clear? Yes. Thank you. Yes, Vivek Prabhu, you can go next. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories uh, to you, Maharaj. Um, my question is that when we are actually, or when I would say myself, when I am engaged in spiritual activity, any like things like uh, even chanting japa or hearing or any like spiritual related activity, I feel somewhere to certain degree, somewhere some connection with Krishna. 
and uh, like uh, these shikshastakam prayers and uh, prayers which you shared which we should read before japa that really really helps in that connection but when like uh, we are engaged in this our material activities and these kind of things yes like this kind of like lecture in between the office that really helps because then it reminds okay yeah like some spiritual things but otherwise so much absorbed in that kind of things i just like looking for your some like uh, instruction or some uh, guidance maharaj that how to really keep ourselves in that mood of krishna while even we are engaged in these material activities well if your life is dedicated to krishna in devotion then your material activities are are called gona bhakti g a u n a and that's mentioned in the shastras it has an, it has another name but gona bhakti is the main name that means that means activities that are parallel to bhakti and at the same time they also have the element of bhakti so when your life is simply dedicated to devotion to krishna whatever you do can be done in the mood of serving krishna that's why krishna says yat yat karosi yat anasi yat jahosi dadasti ya yat tapasi tu kaunte yat tat kurusha marapuna whatever you do whatever you eat whatever you offer and give away as whatever austerities you perform should be done as an offering to me so that is in the ninth chapter of bhagavad gita so trying to not trying to but understanding that hey i'm going to work because i have a family and i need to support my family and together my family and i we are all devotees of the lord so i mean unless you want to live in the forest as a sage then you don't need to go to work <laughs> but it's not practical for everyone and it's not doable for everyone so therefore you have some responsibility to your family and to yourself in order to live the particular lifestyle you are chosen you have chosen so the idea is not to separate these two things your devotional direct devotional activities and your subsidiary or parallel devotional activities as krishna says one who sees me in everything in everything in everything in me i'm never lost and i'm never lost to him so krishna mentions that in the bhagavad gita too try to see krishna or try to connect everything you do with krishna and that's an art it's something you have to work on and cultivate but as your as your strength in your own devotional service increases your consciousness expands out to not only your direct devotional activities but to everything you do therefore you see everything in relationship to krishna and you see that these services you're doing in maintaining the family are are part of your practice of devotional service that's just for grihasthas and that's for those who have that connection with the external energy the external energy is also spiritual when it's transformed through our conscious effort into something spiritual and that's an art because you're dealing with other energies out there so that's something you have to develop and work on and something you have to apply one of the things that you can practice and this is a fact that you distance yourself from everything and anything and then you reflect what do i have to do with anything and that is according to your designated uh, uh responsibility with that object or with that person in the same way what do you have to do with um what's the point i was going to make um everything belongs to krishna everything is krishna's property everything is krishna's energy nothing is separate from krishna separation means wrong consciousness that's all krishna has created everything everything belongs to him 
everything is under his control and everything is meant ultimately in one form or another as an opportunity to serve him. I mean, we have to practice this and understand it through both philosophy and through our day-to-day -day activities to connect everything with Krishna. This is Krishna's car. My wife is Krishna's servant. My children are Krishna's uh, servants. And I, you know, my, my job, it's also belong, the activities are my activities, which are being done as a supportive principle in my devotional life. If you choose that lifestyle. Now, if you don't choose that lifestyle, then you can choose the Brahmachari Ashram or the Sannyas Ashram, like that. But you're not, you haven't chose that. You chose the Grihastha Ashram. So there, therefore, maintaining Grihastha life requires some economic, you know, some economic development to a certain degree, not to a large degree, but to a to agree which is required. So in that, you're supporting your devotional activities through maintaining yourself and your extended self, which are your family members, through the process of serving Krishna by having a particular work in the material world. So seeing how to connect everything to Krishna, then you don't you won't be able, you won't feel such a division between this or that. The problem is, is that the external energy is so mean-spirited. The mode of goodness is absent. The mode of passion is being challenged by an overwhelming degree of the mode of ignorance. We are living in a society now where ignorance and passion rule. The mode of goodness is practically gone. If we were living in a society where the mode of goodness was strong, what I was saying would be really easy and natural to do. But because of the overwhelming negativity in today's present world situation, then people, are, people don't live like people, they live like animals. They don't know what to do, when to do it, or why they're doing it. They simply live to maintain the body and senses. So therefore, that, that hard uh, element of the lower modes, modes of passion and ignorance, cause us to see and make a distinction between our external activities and our spiritual practice. And we do that sometimes to protect ourselves, but ultimately, if you can rise above by being fully Krishna conscious in each and every situation, and that means learning how to see Krishna in everything, then you can somehow or other understand that there's no separation in anything you do. Everything is part of your the one process of devotional service. Jay, Jay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. It's really, really helpful. Thank you. Was it understandable? Yes, yes, absolutely. Do you have any comments? No, I covered no, I a lot. I it's covered like, a lot. No, no, but it's really, really good. I noted lots of points, Maharaj, but it's really like seeing Krishna in everything. I think that's something uh, really, and like... Uh, Every activity, everything is like Krishna activity. When we are in that mode, that's going to help us and not going to bind like, okay. In that yeah, time. you have to get into that mood and that, that is the correct mood. If we're not in that mood, we need to, to make some changes. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I'll give you an example in the Shastras. I'm not sure, I'm not clear of all the points of the example, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave three instructions, three different instructions to three different devotees. One he said, serve the deities. The other one he served, said, serve the Vaishnavas. And the other one he said, uh, 
he gave him some business activity in the in the secular world. He had to do some business. And in the purport, Siddha Prabhupada writes, these three instructions are all on the absolute plane. There is no difference between any of the three. Although the type of services that were given were completely different, but because they were services and given by by the Lord himself, or in our, in our case, the spiritual master, they're all absolute. Yes, Guru Maharaj. That's an interesting pastime. I'm not sure exactly. It's somewhere in the, I think it's in the, somewhere in the Madhya Lila, later part of the Madhya Lila, or maybe an Ancha Lila. So I think that mood is very, very important, Maharaj. Like, what's the yeah. mood for every activity? And Why do we go to sleep at night? Because we like to sleep? No, because we need to, the body needs to rest so we can have the next day, we can wake up and be fresh and be energetic in our service for Krishna. Well, sleeping for the materialists is a way to get out of the misery that they suffer by living in the world. So that they see sleep as a, you know, as a, as a, a kind of a drug to overcome their misery or because of laziness and attachment to the lower modes, people enjoy sleeping or look forward to sleeping. The devotees don't like sleeping. We just do it because it's necessary. So in the same way, we do, you have to do your work in the world because it's necessary. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. I don't want thank you. I want to hear some feedback. No, it's really good. Like I am just listening that uh, understanding that more that uh, I think this our mood for every activity should be how I can please Krishna. And of course, I cannot see maybe Krishna directly, uh, but at least I can please my spiritual master and every like guidance, every instructions, every things take it very seriously. So can progress. So, I, so so let me ask you this: How would that how would that be understood in your day to day job in the world? How would so, you understand that? So, like uh, when I start my activity, let's say uh, this office activity, I just again like remember Krishna that now I'm just going to do this activity, and of course, like uh, whatever I'm doing, what whenever I'm talking, thinking in that mode that yes, every activity, every ability is given by Krishna. And uh, whatever I'm going to do, like not thinking too much that what's going to be the, like ultimately like a uh, result or something that, okay, I have to get this, this, this. Thinking that, okay, just I have to do this job so I can get something so I can feed my and support my family. So everybody can move uh, in the Krishna consciousness way. Yeah, progress. but you can also, you, go, you don't have to do it as a painful experience. You can do it as a service to Krishna. And therefore, even in your workplace, you try to do your best. Not because you want a promotion or being favored by the boss or being known as a great employee. You want to, you, you want to do it nicely as, a, as, a, uh, as part of your service. It's not like it's, oh, painful. <laughs> Good point, Maharaj. I think you got inside my mind actually i was thinking same that sometimes i feel like this service like whether i should be so much like dedicated now i or i should just like do this activity so thank you maharaj i think that's yeah well point. there may be one point in your life where krishna says all right that's enough and now you can move on to something different something better You may not have, it's not like you work in the world your whole life and, and call that devotional service. There's a need at a certain time. Yeah. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also taught us the mood of, the mood of separation when we're doing activities that are not directly related to Krishna. And he used the example 
of this is this is really complements our topic for today. He used the example: a wife, she's you know, she has a, a nice, very nice husband, but she's more attached to this other person who is her lover. Now, in order for her husband not to suspect her relationship with her lover, she does her service to her husband really nicely. But in her heart, she's thinking of her lover and in her mind, she's thinking, when will I get to meet him again? So this, Mahaprab this is Mahaprabhu's example of how to live in this world. That, yeah, okay, I have to do this. So I do it so nicely, but it's really about, I wanna be with Krishna, I wanna be with the devotees, I wanna chant Hare Krishna, I want to you know, discuss philosophical teachings. Uh, we, we prefer the direct activities of devotional service. So these, those that are less direct, we should develop this mood of activity. It's more like the mood of <clears throat> doing it nicely, but at the same time thinking, when can I be with the devotees? When can I be with Krishna? Like that. So that's a little different. That's a little bit different than I went when I first made this explanation. So you see, you can take it up to a higher level. So Maharaj, that's like I think some like challenge here because uh, I actually feel like that uh, that heart is like with Krishna, but in this material activity, I don't feel like. I could give my hundred percent, and that's like kind of I don't know, like challenge internally I face. I feel like it's like just get these things done so I can focus more on some other things like on devotional service. Yes, okay, but but do it nicely, but at the same time, you know, you can't wait to again be engaged in more direct devotional service. Sure. Hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I mean, living in this world and associating with worldly minded people is not what devotees find happiness in. <laughs> but if it becomes a necessary burden, then you have to understand how to connect it in devotional service. It's a necessary burden, that's all. And it won't be a necessary burden your whole life, but it's it's necessary maybe at this particular time. If you like, I have this uh, file, How to Become Krishna Conscious in the Workplace. It was done by a devotee who worked 28 years in the secular world and maintained his Krishna consciousness during the whole time. So he's my god brother, his name is Ramaniya. And uh, when I, I met him and he gave a whole seminar at the Chicago temple many years ago. And then um, I asked him, can you write all this up and make it into a document? And he did. And then he sent it to me. So anyone who wants it, it's how to perform devotional service in the workplace. Please, might, please, Guru Maharaj, it's going it to be very be helpful. Just what you need. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, I'll send it to you, and, is, and uh, if there's anyone else who is listening uh, would also like it, we can, uh, maybe you can send it out to them. Sure. And they can somehow or other connect to you. So you need to give your email address to the devotees so they can connect with you. Sure, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's the best I've seen in this particular category. Yeah. 
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Okay, Hare Hare so Guru Maharaj, there is a question on the chat from, and this question has been asked on Facebook. And this is from Pedro Zarata. And he's asking, is this material world created for Krishna's enjoyment? <laughs> no, for you, for your enjoyment. <laughs> Krishna facilitates the material world in order so we can go back to Godhead. We're not qualified to live with Krishna in the, in the spiritual world. So he creates the material world as a way that we can get rectified from that wrong mentality so we can go back to the spiritual world. This place is a rectification place, that's all. It's a jail. Like you go, when you commit a crime, you go to jail, and you're supposed to be reformed in jail. That's ideally anyway. And then once you do your time and you're, you're, you're reformed, you're out. So, you know, Krishna does this as a service to all those living entities who have left him. And there will always be those living entities. <laughs> I think you should have Lavinia Mataji if you can see on Facebook uh, if there is any comment uh, and by the time we can take another question. Thanks, Mataji. Uh, Radha Vinodhi Mataji, you have your hands up so you can ask a question by the time we are waiting. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glories to Srila Prabhupada and our glories to you. Uh, your, your class really, really made me wonder uh, about a few things because I, I understand and I heard uh, uh, many times the importance of uh, the mood of, uh, of separation. And uh, I, I just started to think about uh, if, if I could have this mood, then uh, it would be so, uh, in a way, it, uh, so much easier to to want to please Krishna, uh, because uh, I, I would have uh, this, uh, this feeling that, that I want to be with him. And I, I just started to think that, uh, what can I do to, to cultivate this, uh, this mood? And uh, my first thought was uh, hearing about him, uh, mm -hmm. because, because obviously I cannot long for someone whom I don't know. But uh, can you maybe, um, uh, say a few practical tips uh, uh, other than this. Uh, what can we do to, to uh, awaken and uh, make yeah. stronger this, this mood? Yeah, that's the process of bhakti. Bhakti is about bringing our consciousness to Krishna. So bhakti contains various types of activities. So all those activities are ways to connect with Krishna. Hearing about Krishna, chanting about Krishna, remembering Krishna, worshiping Krishna, serving Krishna in different ways. These are all forms of connecting with Krishna. So being with Krishna, at least on this level, means to absorb yourself. And I use the word absorb. That means you, know, you constantly get, connect yourself through the varieties of act activities that make up bhakti. And the most direct way is hearing about him, or the most potent way is hearing about him, because hearing leads to chanting, hearing leads to remembering, hearing leads to worshiping, hearing leads to serving. And then you're hearing about his activities, his qualities, his pastimes. But even the day to day services that we do, you say you're doing a, a project, say you're doing just like you're working on that one project I gave you. So you're working on that. So that's service. So that's ultimately, we're doing it as a service to our spiritual master, but then ultimately that's offered to Krishna. So that's a way to connect with Krishna. That's a way to stay absorbed in devotional service. So it's the process itself answers your question. 
Sometimes it's, uh, uh, I, I have a tendency to, to complicate things and uh, yeah, I, I can understand that uh, this process is uh, very nicely built. Uh, I, I just uh, uh, started to think that uh, when I do my services, uh, there are some services which are easier to connect with Krishna and others which are at least for me more difficult. For example, yes, when we, we chant his names, it's, uh, it's so easy to connect it with him because uh, his, his uh, names are involved. But, uh, but there are some certain services uh, which, uh, which seem to be so technical that uh, I have a difficulty to, to connect it with him. And uh, what, what could I do to, to to be able to remember more and connect it with him uh, yeah, more. Just pray. <laughs> as long as you're working under the guidance of the spiritual master and you're following the principles, uh, then you're connected. Just like there's a verse, Pramanais Chetsat Archerais Stralaya Nirantaram Bodhyan Atmanatmanam um let's see bhaktim uh bhaktim uh, avyutamam labeta so this is from the brahma samhita and it's spoken by krishna himself to lord brahma where he's saying the method of self-realization is practiced in slow degrees with the help of scriptural evidence uh, scriptural evidence, Vaishnav behavior, and cultivation and, and uh, perseverance in practice. So under the guidance of scriptural evidence, we understand how to do things. We learn what is the culture of Vaishnavas, how to develop the proper moods and the qualities that are conducive to and we stay determined. So Krishna says in the very name, scriptural evidence, Vaishnav behavior, cult perseverance in practice. So Krishna mentions these three things to Brahma after Brahma speaks the prayers which are known as the Brahma Samhita. So Krishna is giving the whole process in these three statements. Scriptural evidence is our guiding force. Vaishnav behavior is the qualities and mood. And perseverance in practice, determination, is the element or the elixir or the catalyst that brings you from stage one to perfection. So nice and, and so inspiring. Yes. Uh... It just made me remember I, uh, when we had uh, this uh, disciples meeting in Buckland, Holland, uh, Buddha Baba Naprabhu uh, spoke about uh, uh, patience uh, also, that uh, we are so much uh, used to uh, get everything immediately. And, uh, and somehow it's, it's difficult to understand that uh, there are certain things that if, if we want, want to get result uh, and if we want to get quality, yeah, uh, but if you if you if you're cultivating Vaishnav behavior, then that that helps you develop patience. If you're not cultivating Vaishnav behavior, your patience will be thin. Because Vaishnav behavior makes everything nice. That's why Lord Chaitanya said. Not a piece of each and not tell you vasa hishnina, mani nama mana dena. These are the principles of how a Vaishnav functions. And there are many, there are others, of course, but these are one. So determination includes, I mean, pay, is inc includes patience. Because determination is actually a feature of success. One who is determined will ultimately be successful in due course of time. But patience 
is required in order to stay determined. That's why Rupa Goswami says, Utsaham uh, Nistriya Daryat. Enthusiasm, determination, and patience. These are the three characteristics that one has to adopt in the execution of devotional service. If you're not patient, you can't stay determined. And if you're determined, you can somehow over, overcome impatience. Mm -hmm. And if you follow Vaisnav behavior, then it becomes easy because then you don't, you're not so much anxious for results, but you're more fixed on what you're doing at the moment. In other words, you're happy. Whatever your what devotional service is meant to make you happy and you're happy. Whether you're cooking, cleaning, you know, transcribing or chanting, you're happy because it's devotional service. But unless you have that culture of Vaishnav behavior to support it, that happiness may be a little bit less available or fleeting. There's where the happiness comes through Vaishnav behavior. Association is the key for, for this uh, culture of Vaishnava behavior. It helps, yeah, tremendously it helps. Because yes. in association, you get inspiration. Association, you also get knowledge. And you also get corrections. What is not right in that association? You can see. It forces you to act in that in the right way. Otherwise, you can't stay in association with devotees if you're not if you're not up to the standard in behavior. Thank you very much. It's, it's very useful and uh, actually quite uh, <laughs> uh, quite actual for me. I have to say, <laughs> I have this these kind of problems, but it gave me uh, uh, some inspiration to work on it. You don't have to change your nature. That's, I'm talking about your material nature. You just have to learn how to use your material nature in Krishna's service, that's all. And there's a, we use a kind of a, like a joke. Uh, just be yourself because all other positions are already taken. <laughs> yes. You can't be anybody else but who you are. <laughs> yes, but some, sometimes the circumstances are, are, are in such a way that, uh, that it's so difficult to figure out how to properly uh, use our nature. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a process of trial and error, but that's why you read the books. Mm. If you read the books, then you can understand more about your nature. You associate with devotees, you see how that association becomes positive or, or what we say, adverse. Thank you very much. It was very, very helpful. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you. So Guru Maharaj, we are uh, 20 past uh, our time, so 20 minutes past. So uh, would you like to do a japa, round of japa? Okay, we can end with the japa. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Um, Mataji, about that question on FB, uh, can you ask also? What was it, Lavanya, you said? Something? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, that Prabhuji, um, who is asking question on Facebook, he's asking that uh, you said everything is the, for the pleasure of Krishna. So that's why he asked that question. Um, do you want to uh, comment on and that, Guru Maharaj? Uh, what, what was the question again? Yeah, he's telling that um, because you, um, he asked this question that uh, is the material world created for our pleasure? Um, because you you were telling that um, everything is for Krishna's pleasure, uh, he asked that question. Yeah, mm, yeah, he's he's showing his love for the for the living entities who ran away for him. So he's 
Krishna is, uh, he's Atmaram, he's self-contained. He finds happiness within himself. But everything he created uh, is for his pleasure, Guru Maharaj? Um, in one sense, yeah, but his pleasure manifests itself in, in serving the living entities by giving them a chance to go back home, back to Godhead. Mm. Krishna doesn't want us to leave the material world, <laughs> but we, we did. <laughs> So in order for him to get us back, he creates it. Mm. But the scriptures say that there always will be always a material world because there will always be living entities who will be in that mood of wanting to be separate from Krishna. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Krishna is like, he's not miserable, but he does things to, he does things for his own pleasure, but it's not like, well, he decided to make the material world because he had nothing to do, so he wanted to have some fun. <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> he, he did it because... Uh, it's it's necessary for us to get back to Godhead, and this is this is the way to do it by creating a place where we can rectify rectify our wrong mentality. Sometimes it's said that every living entity will eventually go back to Godhead, but it may take you know how many. Unlimited years, unlimited millenniums, you don't know. Okay, I will send the file to Vivek, Lavanya, and the conference. So you can find it in, through these three different agencies. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. But I'll do that right after we do the japa. So those who are, can get it from the conference, they can get it directly from Vivek or from, from Lavanya. It's quite good. Uh, I enjoyed the seminar when I, I mean, I learned a lot from the seminar when I heard it. And this was about 10 years ago when I heard it in Chicago. But you have to read it carefully and see what apply what you can apply and what is not applicable to your particular situation. Okay, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhaktivinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. 
Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasudhi Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shira Prabhupada Ki Jai. All glories to the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. Panchakalpa Tarubis Ja. Kripa Sindhu Viva Ja Vadita Nam Bhavne Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Nam Mahamaha. Gaur Rakta Vinda Ki Jai. Thank you very much.